So today um, we are with uh, Katie Ruiz with the Ruiz. What's the proper? What's the proper? Ruiz. Yeah, Ruiz. Sorry. I like to say it the right way. So Ruiz uh, with uh, Vivid Space in San Diego. Um, but you're watching us in real time on a virtual art gallery exhibit. And we're kind of doing a collaboration today. Um, I kind of have a uh, art salon that does online virtual reality shows. And it's a new creative group that I founded with another artist here in Florida. And we come together to ignite passion for the arts through virtual reality, live performances, drawing, atmosphere, and a wide range of exhibitions with guest artist participation. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, that, that I have the Wandering Masters Art Salon and we're with Katie Ruiz with Vivid Space and she'll be talking about her space in San Diego shortly. Um, but today it's exciting because a lot of what we do is in person, like at a gallery right now. If we were in San Diego with her, we'd be having some wine and going through her exhibition. But because we have so many amazing technology tools and a lot of people can't go to San Diego to see her space, we allow for online live stream opportunities where you can virtually see her space or her show and the paintings that she's showcasing. Um, but they're online, so it allows for a great opportunity to showcase the artists in a you know global way. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Katie. Um, she is an artist-run gallery. Um, she has an MFA in painting at the New York Studio School of Drawing, Painting, and Sculpture in New York. She was born in LA, but now and currently resides in San Diego. Um, Katie, we're so happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Vivid Space and all the cool things you're doing in San Diego. All right. Well, um, uh, again, thank you for having me, Dana. This is a very exciting and new uh, opportunity, something we've never done before. So it's nice to um, have this and see how this works. And I thought, you know, when Dana... Uh, came to me with the idea. I thought it was such a great idea just to get a whole different group of people to see this amazing work and I wanted as many people as possible to be able to see this show and um, some of the work that we have. So what I've done is I lived in New York and then I moved back home to California and I decided I wanted to open an art gallery that um, helped artists in San Diego and in New York and all over. Uh, but mostly what I do is I show two and three person shows that highlight one New York artist or uh, around New York or sometimes, not always New York, but um, and one San Diego based artist. And what that does is it allows those artists to network with each other, to really grow together since they're having a two or three person show. They get to really spend some time together. Usually the um, out of town artist is able to come in and spend some time at the gallery and um, really get to meet and network and help grow the art world in San Diego. That was really my goal. And over the past year, I have done, uh, I opened in December of last year, so about a year now. And I will have done, um, by the time I'm done, it will be 13 months, because it's gonna overlap December again, and 10 shows in 13 months. Wow, that's ambitious. So, yeah, way too, <laughs> way too ambitious. I almost, <laughs> gave myself a heart attack, but um, I'm still standing, just barely, but this uh, this show is a really great show um, that I've been working on with Serena Laverne for the last year. We've been talking about this show and planning it, and so currently what's up at Vivid Space right now is the work of Serena Laverne, who is an artist that I met in New York at the New York Studio School. And she currently resides in Germany, but she is um, coming back to the States soon. And um, so her work, I thought, paired really beautifully with a San Diego native artist named Amanda Cachadorian, who... Um, they're both painting, you know, more of a Southwest skeletons, cactus, flowers, succulents, desert scenes. Um, it's just pouring out of both of them. And um, 
I thought their work went so beautifully together. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, there's a few other artists, including uh, Neil Goss, who does these really beautiful weavings um, that are wall hangings that I'm excited to show you as well, and then a few works by each of us, so that's pretty exciting too. That is awesome. And then as you guys are uh, watching the show, um, you can. there's a chat underneath. You can always chat and ask us questions. You can't speak to us, but we'll be able to see your questions and then answer it in real time. Kind of makes it exciting. So um, this is kind of like the reception area of the tour. So I'm going to go ahead and go in and then just so you know, uh, we'll introduce a little bit about each of the artist's work and kind of Katie's inspiration for the curation as a whole and then as she said um, the three artists in the beginning are currently showing in San Diego so if you have any questions her emails below um, and let's get and then they're up until November 2nd 3rd uh, the show that is uh, Desert Gods is the two artists Amanda uh, uh, Kashadorian and Serena Laverne and then I have Nick um, Neil's work in the hallway and down uh, the other part of the gallery so it's not part of that show specifically but it is part of the gallery okay. and the artists that we show awesome okay let's go in oh and Sorry. then um, I mean, the show closes um, we're gonna have it open on Saturday if you're in San Diego next Saturday from 1 to 4 perfect I'm oh, sorry, I don't really go in. It's like a remote control. I like navigating this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go in a circle. We'll start with the cool, the Neil work first, and then okay. guys, just so you know, this is technology and there are glitches. So this is a working platform for Red, but right now, this the artwork is not to scale. So I'm sure she'll let us know some of the dimensions as we look at each work. Um, and then the first one's a photo of a uh, sculpture. Yeah, so this is a wall hanging sculpture art piece all in one. And it is by Neil Goss. And he is uh, not in California. He just recently moved and I cannot remember where he moved. So please excuse me for that. But this piece is called Something Beautiful, Real or Not. It is... 21 inches high by 32 inches long and it is made he he hand dyes all of his wool and he uses real natural dyes wow this piece was hand dyed and he uses things like real natural dyes like cochineal and indigo and pericone i'm sorry i don't actually know the words in english i only know them in spanish but it's okay uh, it makes it authentic um <laughs> I just can't remember what paracon is, but it's a it's a yellow marigold. Marigold, that's it. Oh, perfect. Uh, flower. Anyway, so that's um, his work is really beautiful to me because he um, it's made of hemp, natural dyed wood, and a frame and tacks. And what he does, if you've never heard of backstrap weaving, I found him because I'm also a backstrap weaver, and I was researching other people who do a similar technique, mm -hmm. and I came across his work, and I thought it was just absolutely beautiful and unique, and it's sort of m melding old and new. You know, these are ancient techniques, ancient, um, one of the first types of weaving that was ever created is a backstrap loom. So what that is, is a loom that literally does strap around your back. It's kind of made of a few sticks, and you create your tension um, with uh, other sticks, and you can pull up, and but it is strapped around your back, and then you have to tie it to a tree or something strong so that that's what creates the tension. Wow. So, yeah. So what he's done here is something really unique by taking the – weaving but then leaving some of the strings out to dangle down and then he sort of created different uh, geometric designs with the tacks that are pushed into the board and the frame. So that's what you're looking at. That's unique. Yeah. And, and he used pins and then it's, and then, yeah, I'm just looking at it all. That's crazy. Yeah, the weaving is just the, the narrow piece in the middle and with a back strap loom your pieces are always going to be pretty narrow you cannot make them wider than your you are so they're always going to be 
Uh, you can make them more narrow, but you can't make them wider because you there's just no other there's no tension out there besides what's being pulled around you. So there's a it's always a pretty narrow uh, you know one to two foot wide um, weaving, and then you can make it however long you want depending on how long you made the um, weft, and then. Um, he's pulled out those elements that are then attached in different ways to the board and the frame that are then pushed onto it, creating another element. So it makes it more sculptural than just uh, what people think of, you know, as a craft. It's yeah, really no, it feels more sculptural, definitely sculptural than a craft. Yeah. And it's but, interesting, the process, like you really use your, your whole body to... Uh, yeah. You wouldn't think, like, you know, that's a unique way. It's very, uh, a lot of, you know, you're, he, he used his whole body to create it. That's intense. Mm -hmm. And it's a very slow process. These pieces are, uh, you know, I would go to work to make my weaving and I would get an inch done in three hours. You know, it took me three weeks to get a weaving two feet long and one foot wide. It, it just is a very tedious, slow process, but it is also a really beautiful process to learn. And um, I think it, for me, we grew up in a society where it's, you know, rush, 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 hurry, hurry, hurry. And this is about really slowing down, do it stitch by stitch, one by one, yeah. row yeah. by row, you know, just every single row matters in a weaving. And that's what, did he say how what brought him on to weaving? Was he or was he always a weaver? You said or no? I think I I can't remember personally right okay. now exactly how he got started weaving, um, but I know that he's been doing it for quite a long time, and he's worked with different fiber studios, and I think he started sculpture and welding and weaving came into it maybe through a residency. That's how I learned, but um, I'm not sure how he learned. Yeah, and then his other work kind of, we'll, we'll zoom out for a second because they kind of talk to each other. Um, yes. It's, and, and I like the uh, way he, yeah, so I'll let, I'll let you talk about that and then I'll go into the next one. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and you can't tell the size difference so much, but the blue and white one is about twice the size. It's 37 inches by 50 inches. Mm-hmm. And it's called, it's hard to say, mm -hmm. and it's made of hemp, wool, alpaca, indigo, that's the color he used, and the frame and tacks. So this one is really soft, and it has this beautiful, I guess it's the alpaca wool that is coming down there. And then um, this was such a funny thing to have in the gallery because people would just walk up to it and try to touch it. And I was like, you can't touch the art. You can't touch the art. But they couldn't help themselves because it's so soft and fuzzy. Oh, yeah, They're it like, does look soft and fuzzy. Yeah. It is. It really is. Like a, like a pet or something on the left, the white. Mm -hmm. It kind yeah. of reminds me of cotton. Yeah. It, yeah, it does look like cotton, and so he's using wool and, uh, well, it says wool, alpaca, or maybe it's alpaca wool, and then the hemp is what uh, the strings are that he's using, and he's dyed those, the yarn and the string pieces, and indigo dye, um, and that actually is two, two different weavings that are hung on there, the one with the white, and then there's one with the black that's mm -hmm. littler next to it, and then it has the dangling down unwoven um, hemp pieces and the natural dyes and there's rope. Wow, this and, is very uh, detailed. Yeah. Um, he's really taken weaving and turned it into sculpture and fine art in such a beautiful way. And I just, oh, I've, I've had such an enjoyable time having these in my life. I, that's my one of my favorite things about having a gallery. It's like, oh, I get to have these yeah. around. A month, you know, uh, I, wish I could keep them all, but I can't. But um, this is one of the ones that I'm just like, well, this will never get old. You know, I would keep this in my life forever. It's just endlessly interesting. Yeah, and enjoyable in so many different ways. How do you think uh, would would it be easy to like to hang up? Because it's is already like the 
the artist to preserve it? Is it like a process to keep it preserved the way it is or it's pretty durable? Um, you know, I guess after like several years, maybe it would need some sort of cleaning. I don't know what the, I mean, I'm sure you can just gently dust it, but, um, so to, yes, it's wired just like a painting on the back. So it's framed, it's in a, there's a wood board on the back or cork, and then there's a frame and then it's hung very professionally. It's very well put together. He obviously has a lot of skill in building yeah, as well. Because that. the way he put these together is they're very strong, sturdy. Nothing's going to move. Nothing's going to get um, destroyed. It's a really uh, – and for shipping, you know, it was pretty easy. He had just um, wrapped it up and then folded the extra dangling pieces down and then wrapped those up again. And it was really easy to unpack and hang, and there was no, no trouble with it at all. It's been um, – this is fun to look at. It's very uh, intricate. He seems very sophisticated in his process. Yeah, and his uh, his work just keeps evolving and evolving. And it's he's someone that I would love to collect his work for a long time. You know, get one of these pieces and then get another piece that's sort of evolved in a year and then see what else comes about. And you guys met through online, through looking at his yeah. work? Cool. Yeah. We met through Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Instagram. It's true. I find a lot of artists on Instagram. Yeah, me too, because they're easy to collaborate. And a lot. I think Instagram is a good way to just showcase your work. And I totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's Neil, everyone. Neil Goss. Very beautiful work. Uh, and does he do paintings, too? Um, he oh, does installations. Most, he had these giant woven, like very long, skinny woven um, pieces that looked like aspen trees. Yep. And then he created an entire room. And I think they even did performance pieces with oh, those. Yeah. So yeah. he does more installation work. I don't think he paints that much. That but uh, really cool. if you want to look him up on Instagram, his name is Backstrap Weaver. Backstrap, that's awesome. Yeah. He must have some Western influence in his life. Oh, Kansas City. That's where he is. He's in Kansas City. And he does a lot of, like, he'll do these pieces, but it just keep expanding them into the whole room. But I don't see a lot of painting in his work. Yeah. It's mostly weaving. And sometimes he'll take these weavings into nature and do installations that way, too. So it's just much more of a sculptural element. And I think... The color element really comes in with the dye, dyeing of the wool. Mm, which makes it have that, na it looks very nature influenced. Like yes. you said, like the neutral color selection. Yes, very much in, an environmentalist, I think. Are you having this up until November? Are you going to keep this in your gallery longer? Uh, yeah, th these pieces, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, they're not going to be in another show, but they will be around the gallery for a little while. Yeah. Okay. Unless someone decides to take one home. Exactly. That's why we're here. To learn yeah. and to learn new artists. And up next, we have, uh, this is an oil painting? This is an oil painting. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. By Amanda Cashadorian. She is a San Diego-based artist. She recently graduated from Berkeley, and um, she started doing something really interesting with her paintings. Uh, this one is called Germexican One, and it is large. It is 72 inches by 60 inches. Wow. Uh, oil on canvas. Um, and what she does, and I don't know that this one is an exact reflection of what she's doing with this, but she takes your ethnicity um, so for example, I am Mexican I, and she's German and Mexican. So that's why it's called Germexican uh -huh. because these plants are native to Germany and to Mexico. And then she puts them together and she makes these scenes based on the succulents and the plants, but it's really comprised of your ethnicity. That's unique. I don't know if you can special order one of your own ethnicity or if she just chooses the people that she wants to do. Yeah. I know working on a friend's profile right now and so she was researching um 
you know, the plants in Europe for that, and then Latin American plants for, I don't know what the girl's ethnicity is, but um, that's what these paintings are about. They're really about uh, um, ethnicity and where we come from and the native plants, they come out of it. But I, what I really like about her work is that they look like they glow. Yeah. They're not glowing, I promise, but they really do look like they glow, and the way she deals with light I think is very interesting. They're backlit most of the time mm. and more frontlit too. There's um there's a lot of different just juxtapositions going on where it sort of doesn't it looks normal and at the same time if you look closer it's not normal at all. Yeah. It's kind of surreal like Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the with the the sky to the mountains for like surrealism. Yeah, a little... and we accept it because we're like, oh yeah, desert plants in a desert scene. And then you look closer and you're like, well, you know, those aren't necessarily all desert plants and they're not. And then there's this uh, heart thing going on, a heart in a bowl type oh, of thing. Oh yeah, I see it at the bottom. Yeah. So then things start becoming a little more surreal. I really enjoy her color palette too. I think the earthy tones... You know, they just work well in so many places. You can put a painting like this anywhere and it would work and look great. You know, it's just the type of painting that you could use in so many different situations and it could just make a room look fantastic. Yeah, it would brighten up any room. It's bright, it's, like it's beautiful, it's a great conversation piece. You know, you can tell the story. You could even, I don't know if she would take orders. If she, <laughs> probably. Is she working on a show, another show right now, or does she works on people mostly? She, uh, yeah, she does show her work a lot, but I think right now she's focusing on making a new body of work that is based on this similar type of thing. That's with cool. new, new people. And she's a she's a local to San Diego, right? Yeah, yeah. She was in San Francisco for a few years getting her degree, and now she's back. Very exciting. And then the next one is. Uh, Same, not the same size, right? It is the same size. It is also 72 by 60 inches. Um, and it is also oil on canvas. And it is called Germexican 2. Mm. Um, so again, it's a mix of different plants that are native to different places. And um, they're... I don't know what the plants are specifically or if they're all real even or maybe they're hybrids that she created too things that she made up oh but there's a pomegranate in there and there's poppies in there I'm seeing it now and then again it has the same heart in a bowl kind of thing um I don't I don't know the I love how, how these cactuses take on, or cactuses, I should say, plants, mm -hmm. they take on such character, too, you know, they almost act like people, like they look like profiles of people, in yeah. a way, you know, they have a lot of character to them. I love the one on the left, the little, and that's kind of phallic, this one's a little phallic, right? Or is it just, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that was the intention, but. I don't know, but, um. The, the cactuses and the elements in the paintings definitely repeat themselves over and over, and I find that interesting. I like when pieces overlap a little bit, and you can find elements of the same thing in, in different paintings by the same person. It's sort of like, you know, I'm stuck on this, and I can't get away from it, and I want to keep talking about it until I'm done talking about it. Yeah. I, I like that. Like, you really have to work on a theme until it's really done really done you know and I think she's really pushing everything she can out of these to really push the idea as far as she can go with it yeah and then you know the cactus is the main character the main subject it's gonna be interesting to see if her work evolves and she puts the cactus on like the left or like really small in the corner and like change yeah. up the you know but it's the way she's doing it now you can tell she's really focused on the two cactuses the main subject yeah, I love these together, too. They look so good together. They do. They really work together. They're really beautiful. How I long just, did it take for her to create, do you know? Um, 
I don't know how long it. I know that it's a pretty slow process um, with a lot of layering and a lot of blending. Um, she's very particular about that, and she really likes to spend her time on them. Uh, but I don't know specifically how long these pieces took. Cool. But they're really, they're really beautiful. And then we have one more by her. Yeah, so this was sort of the star of the show. Um, it's about 10 feet long. Um, wow. Yeah, you can't tell specifically in this one, but it's 96 inches long and 60 inches high. Really big painting. It took up the whole entire wall. Well, that's um, fun. Yeah, and it, you know, it really does read as a, an altar to me. It reads as sort of an offering or an altar to Mother Nature, almost. That's what it feels like to me. Um, but I think it's uh, just such a showstopper. You know, everyone who came into the gallery that night, it's the first thing you see when you walk in the door mm -hmm. on the opening night. And everyone just stopped and like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like every single person, oh my gosh, they just could not um, not stop themselves. And at one point, there was like a giant circle of people, half circle, around the painting, staring at it and talking about it because it was just such a huge conversation piece. Um, this needs to go somewhere important, you know? It can't just like, it needs a big wall, first of all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely is a big wall, but it you know it really is such an amazing painting. Um, I can't imagine you know waking up to this every day and getting to own this piece would be so great. It's it just and she's got the glowing cactus theme still happening. Yeah. And I was thinking that too, like an altar or a ceremony was right. going on, and the use of the color, like at sunset or sunrise, like the it seems very peaceful. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, even though it might be like a, like an offering, it still seems like a very peaceful setting. Oh, yeah. It feels like a gift, like when you make an altar for Dia de los Muertos. You know, it's about, it's about making something beautiful. It's not about, you know, something bad. It's always about something wonderful. It's about offering something beautiful to the world or to the whatever, whoever it's for. But yeah, I think, it, you know, it is very calm. There's these calm moments with the lake and the mountains and then the on. layers of grass and then those cactus are just glowing on yeah. the sides. And then it, as you get in there, those um, they're so well rendered. You know, you can get right up close and the, they're just absolutely beautiful. They look real, the succulents. And it's crazy, too, because succulents are such a thing right now, well, at least in Florida. <laughs> so, like, having the little plants and the little cactus. Like, I'm obsessed with nature and plants right now. I don't know if it's, like, a therapeutic thing, but, like, I totally connect and vibe with these. Yes, yes, me, too. I'm really into my house plants lately. Me, too. I have them all over. Succulents, yep. <laughs> I have a million of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, the best part is you don't have to water them very often. Mm. They're they, just there they, and they're beautiful. They, yeah, they're great and they make me happy. I love it. They make me very happy. I totally relate. Yeah, I like your wallpaper. Yeah, <laughs> see, this is actually like an installation I did just because it made me oh. happy. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. I understand, like, I've got greenery everywhere and, like, I feel like this is, this is 10 feet long. It's insane. This is gorgeous. I wonder if she looks at, she sets up a still life, or she's mostly pictures? But Gosh, I don't know. I mean, I know she recently went to Europe to look at the plants and study them, so... She must um, have photos, you know, she, yeah. I, she definitely took photos. I'm sure she did some drawings, um, paintings, uh, but maybe some are from real life. You know, the ones that she can get her hands on and keep around, like the succulents. Yeah, this is incredible. Mm-hmm. And then we'll zoom out and look at them all from, yeah, they all, you can tell her style. Yeah, she definitely has a theme and a style for this body of work. Um, she's another one that I think is worth watching for a long time. You know, she's just really getting started. This is someone who you should 
invest in now. She's like the kind of person that this is just the beginning. She's young. This and this is her. These are young paintings. Can you imagine what will come out of her in, over the next 10, 20 years? Yeah, that's true. It's exciting. Um, She's gifted for sure. Yeah. So I, um, I will continue, but I love the glowing. Very beautiful. Glowing cactuses. Cacti. <laughs> Next up we have Serena, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can relate to these. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. So uh, these are Serena Laverne paintings, and they're quite a bit smaller than they look here. They are about 12 by 12 inches. And Serena Laverne is a female artist. She also went to the New York Studio School. That's where I met her. Um, did you ever meet her? There? Yeah. I met yeah. her at a marathon. She was a monitor, a, like, you know, and then, and then I think right when she was leaving, like, I was there. Yeah, I met her. She's really cool. Yeah, and she's from Texas, and she has been painting her skeleton and desert paintings ever since then, really. Um, I mean, they've evolved quite a bit. She was doing skulls, like animal skulls, a few years ago for the her thesis show, I remember, and now it's she's just kept pushing her subject and doing these imagination paintings of the desert and the skeletons and... Um, I've always loved her application of paint. I've always been a big admirer, one of her paintings and her composition and her color, but also just the tactileness of her paint. You know, you can tell that there's like four or five paintings that she's gone through underneath there. Yeah. She just kept the first painting that came along. But um, you can see, you know, there's it's thick and there's this like dryness to it. They have almost like a they're not shiny at all. I, I just love her color palette. They almost feel like clay. Like she's yeah, like, like mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I just think her subject matter is playful. It's strange. It's they feel dreamy. They also feel a little bit surreal, but in a completely different way because they also feel very uh, real life too. And some of them, not specifically these ones, but. Um, they're very much, you know, of the desert, and uh, I love this painting. Yeah, this, and I like how in inverted the skull is. Yeah, it's in the sky, and maybe it's like I think it's like a dream skeleton. You know, there that person and they on the ground is walking through the desert. This is how I envision it. Yeah, walking through the desert, and they're thirsty and tired, and then they're like hallucinating, and they see the skull in the sky that tells them to keep going. Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah. I see that too. And I like the use of the teeth. The teeth is like my favorite. In the the skull's teeth. And I and like the also, I like the green cactus in the right corner. Kinda like your eye goes there and you go you know, she's got a good composition here. Yeah. I didn't even notice that green canvas in the bot or green cactus, but it's wonderful. But I do see now that it says the word going. Yeah. Across the face, which I didn't notice that. When before. you just said that, that's funny. I <laughs> thought, yeah, keep on going, or you know. It's like a. I think the skeleton's meant to be a hallucination. That's just what I think. I don't know. I do love the paint. The use of the pink and the blue and the light blue in the sky to the purple it's ex it's so exciting it makes it fun and the not bits of pink poking through and the desert poking through the eyes sort of reflecting into the eyes yeah and yellows that are coming through it's just so clever i if i could just buy all of her paintings up i would i, know, I absolutely I love, this one. love them and I love the use of the desert, the, the color she used for that. Yeah, like a completely different kind of color than Amanda's work, but still both working in desert themes. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was really interesting how they both saw the color in such a different way. Um, yeah, there's always sort of there. She has a lot of pastel moments in her work, but still with this very strong theme and a very strong 
uh, narrative and composition. And mm -hmm. then they, she uses black really well, too. Yeah. I don't know if she makes her black or if it's even black or if it's dark blue brown or what it is, but um, you know, there, there's just a lot of brave things going on for a painting. That's a good word. It's true. And I, the white little clouds makes it mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, it does feel like a very happy skull. It's not like a skull in like a negative, like go down here and you'll die kind of path. It's more like yeah. a happy. It's like a hopeful skull. Like I'm here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love the birds. That was clever, like you said. The two little, the two birds flying around. That's probably, that makes the skull more, feels more rounded. That's a neat piece. And what's that called? It's titled Going Somewhere? or Keep Going. Keep Going. And then this is the next one. Yes. This is cool. This one is called Spindle Top. Um, and it looks like Don Quixote de la Mancha. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if it is or not, or if it's just a cowboy or a skeleton cowboy riding a horse. And, it, and he's roping, he's got a rope in his hand, like a lasso. Yeah. And there's this cloud of dust coming up from this, and it's creating another sort of skeleton face. So they're sort of illusioned skeletons. Oh, wait, um, I see one. Where's the other skeleton? No, I only think there's just oh, okay. another one big head. I'm just comparing it to the other one. Oh, there's okay. two paintings of skeleton heads, but they're made of sky, and in the second one, it's made of smoke. Yeah, that's true, like dust, smoke. Yeah. It's like I, almost I, like a rodeo, a rodeo horse. Yeah, is the horse picking up dust? Yeah, it so. feels like it's because of the circle of the ground, like it's been in a circle, so the creating that dust that's coming up into the yeah. skull. I think that's the other reason I like these paintings so much is I can't ever quite put my finger on it and I therefore find them endlessly interesting to look at, you know? Yeah. Like I, I look at them over and over and then I find new things all the time. It's funny that seeing them in a different sort of scale is changing the way that I'm looking at them. And Cause it's they're, also because yeah, they feel just, big on this wall, but we now know it's like not to scale. So. Yeah. Even like in a different room is helping me see new things in it. So I just find them super mysterious. Mm. And uh, and for that reason, like you don't want to buy a, a painting that you then in a year are like, oh, I'm bored of that. You know, you want to yeah. find a painting that you never get bored of. And I think these paintings are the kind of paintings that you can just look at over and over and over and continue to find new things about them for years. I feel That's like the ball, the red, the red ball is so bold, but that's not the first thing that, like, it doesn't feel like it's in faux, it feels like it's in the background, like in the, it's yeah, very, is that the sun? oh, or the sun. I don't know if it's the sun, I, I don't know if it is or not, what, I don't know. But I think that's, that it is bold, it's so, it's so dreamlike, like you said. Yeah. And the hazard yeah. sign was clever. Yeah. Unless it's another type of sign that. <laughs> is that a hazard sign or is this just like a. Yeah, very clever, very mysterious. Yeah, and but she's got the use of black in here, the black gray, but it's not black. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you enough information that you know what you're looking at and you are, and you're still taken by the first thing that you see, but then you, there's always more to go in and see and enjoy. And we still have like about 10 people on. So if you guys have any questions, just, you know, ask us and we'll be able to answer it. If you have any questions about the work we're looking at or the artists that we're, you're seeing. So feel free to chime in. And then, um, and do you on, at, in your studio, in the gallery, do you have those next to each other? I do. There's a, there's a window in between and I have them on either side of the window and then I have two of the cactuses on e uh, of Amanda's next to those. Yeah. Um, so it looks, they look really great together. Yeah, I feel They're like the these two belong together. together. Yeah, these pieces are the same size so they're, they're perfect together. And then there's a whole bunch of small 
smaller ones, like six by six inches, and we made a big grid of those too. And then this is one of the larger ones that she has in the show. And it's called Out West. Um, and I think it is such a beautiful painting. And it is also, again, along the same lines of mystery as the other paintings. You know you're looking out on the desert, but then other things start to happen. Like, look at the bottom left corner with the shadow that's coming down, the purples. What is that? Is that our reflect, our shadows? Is it, what is creating that shadow that we're looking at? And then I notice other things like the hallucination or the uh, mirage maybe that's happening up in the sky mm -hmm. where you can see parts of the desert, but it also looks like a mirage in and out. And the, if you've ever been in a really hot desert, <laughs> the sky really does do that. It's yeah. so weird. And it also, I immediately thought it could also be the reflection of the, the pond. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a lot of things. But the colors are insane. And this is oil? This is oil. I love the, the use of the purple leading your eye to the green of the bushes. Like, it's beautiful. Yeah, and those soft sand colors, the soft peaches and tans and oh it's just a beauty to look at and this is actually two canvases that are hung together and it is in a frame they all are framed mm -hmm. her pieces all came with a beautiful handmade black frame and the canvas is set into it you can take it out of the frame if you want to but i wouldn't the mm -hmm. frame is gorgeous and you can see it here it's just a simple wood frame but the painting is it's not like sticking out, it's all even. So it's set within the frame, which is really nice. Yeah, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't think to change it because that's the artist's, you know, chosen frame. So it's kind of like yeah. makes the whole work come together. Yeah, because it what feels do you like your shadows. Is that a horse shadow? <laughs> Where? Oh, that's at the bottom? Yeah. I could even, I was thinking it was like a building shadow. Or a ladder or something, or a fence. Yeah. Oh. I'll have to ask her. I didn't realize I had these questions until I started saying them out loud. No, but it's <laughs> good. It's good. It forces you to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I like the interesting dynamics of the the clouds because they're so white, but you know, it it doesn't because the the different sizes it like. You see that the big clouds in the front, but you push back with your eye to see the little clouds and the mirage. Like it's a feels like a whole space. She did good with the spatialness of the use of the um, plants. Yeah, absolutely. And that blue in that water is ugh, like you want to go into that pool of water because it's so awesome. Oh, you know what? I wonder if the pool. I wonder if the pool of water is a mirage too. Yeah, because you're dreaming about it, and yeah. it's like being lost in the desert. The place tricks yeah. on you. <laughs> it really does. No, she did amazing. Do you know how long this one took? Or her her research? I think she paints on them off and on for a long time. Um, you know, she builds them up and works on a couple at a time. I don't know how long this one took. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think she's like a sit down and make one painting kind of person. I think she's working on a few of them and like doing this over here and then tomorrow do a little of this and work on multiple yeah. at a time. But I, I mean, that's my head except for that I have this one vision where I went into her studio and I you know she had like multiple pieces out at the same time so I think that's probably why I think that but I don't actually know because she was making them in Germany which is crazy because like she's thinking about her home and what inspires her maybe and yeah and it's kind of great because now she's gonna move home back to Texas and she'll be able to paint actual scenes from things that she sees in real life so who knows how that will Turn influence out. her work not that she hasn't seen desert in real life but I think part of the point of painting these was to paint them from imagination which is the memory like the mirage like yeah. memory kind of home or of exactly. things that make her happy perhaps mm -hmm. this is yeah. awesome
and it's tall. This is a tall one. Yeah. And then we have some of your work that I love. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah, this is one of my paintings, and it is rather large. These ones are 60 by 48 inches, mm -hmm. and this is part of my blanket series, which is uh, the series that I think I'm most well-known for. I've been called the blanket girl more than once at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind so, of awesome. Um, yeah, I started painting this theme in New York, and there's a bunch of paintings of people under couple of couples under blankets and some alone and but they always have a you know a textile element which is what led me to become a weaver and now I'm also making sculptural weavings out of yarn and things like that but I also make my paintings that are um, based on the blankets and this one is called different paths and it's However you choose to look at it. Some people see them walking into the mountain. Some people see them separating, separating and walking yeah. away. Some people. So, pe you know, I don't really want to necessarily say which is the right one because I'd rather look or not right, but just the way that I thought that it was when I made it versus the way that other people see it and then they tell me how they feel about it. But it's called Different Paths and I don't know... Um, it's oil on canvas, and I really like color and textural elements and textiles. So um, I explored a whole bunch of different textiles, uh, and then I started making these colorful triangle ones for a while. So this one had that in it. Um, and you're still currently making making blankets too, you said. I'm making blankets. I don't. I make weavings, and then I recently been making sculptures out of the weavings and then I am painting but they're not blanket paintings anymore so I don't know how much how many more blanket paintings if yeah. any more are going to be made at this point so yeah. these are sort of like some of the last few large blanket paintings that I have uh, you um, I don't know if it's because I live in Florida but like I am in St. Petersburg and I'm near the Dali Museum and I don't know why, but my favorite part is like the bot, the bottom, the bottom left with the. It's like a zoomed in the pattern of the color of the blankets. And yeah. Dolly's work, whenever you go there, like huge paintings. And then sometimes he zooms in on like the molecules, oh. and then there's patterns, and then you'll see the rest of the molecules in like the work. But he has these like zoomed in moments, like on some of his canvas work, and that's what it reminded me of. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. You should look him up. Well, look those up. They're, like, his larger ones that – but he, like, zooms in, on, and he makes them circular-like, so you, it looks like a microscope. Mm-hmm. And then he's got his huge painting, and that's what that reminded me of. Yeah, I did want it to feel more abstract the closer you got, and I do like the idea of the pattern coming off the blanket. So I've been – the later paintings, there's a lot more of the pattern – like flying the off the blanket or coming off the blanket in a different way. More abstract, uh, looser mm -hmm. interpretation. Yeah. Right. And this is oil, right? Yep, oil and canvas. Are you still working with oil or you moved to a different, was, when you're not weaving? No, I'm, I'm always going to be an oil painter. I can't, I can't <laughs> not do it. I, I love it. I oil. love oil paint. Although I've been doing a lot of watercolors lately. You have? Some yeah, quick just stuff. Yeah, just because that's easy when you're outside, and I've been painting outside. And I, it's crazy because, like, uh, the girl previous, like, the, the shorts feel uh -huh. like they glow. Like, yeah. his briefs. So <laughs> really? you Yeah, so you even kind of have that, like, glowing, you know, with the use of the color. Like, it feels like his shorts are very, like, neon. Yeah, me. I guess that's because the darks are so dark. Yeah. No, these are beautiful. I remember seeing these being, when you started the process, like, these are awesome. Yeah, you were there for that. I know. <laughs> Saw the process happen. It must have been so interesting to, like, which color should I pick for this triangle and, like, you know, make the right one, see what, you know, change it up and... See, it changes the whole blanket. Yeah. 
it must yeah, have been. It's, it's a really slow process to get the blanket on there. Like <laughs> the blanket takes forever. longer than the rest of the painting. Yeah. You know, to try out different patterns, different colors. Um, yeah, it's sort of like putting together a puzzle in a lot of ways. It's Making sure the shapes work. Yeah. It's very like it's sure it's very challenging but rewarding. Yeah, it is. It is. It's nice to, to look at these. I haven't looked at them in a little while. They're good friends. And I love the, the entry into the bottom right. It's very loose compared to the details of the blanket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost I like, like the water. Loose and tight in my work. Yeah, you can see that, and it makes it exciting. Very exciting. Thank you. So then we have another blanket. I haven't seen this one though. Is this new? Well, like, more recent. Uh, no, I think it, yeah, around the same time it came after. That's for sure. Um, this one is also sixty by forty-eight inches, and it is called "The Tide Is Coming." And uh, so there's always, you know, well, not always, but there's sometimes a couple, and then there's other earthly elements going on the path or the water or a boat or whatever thing is going on within the painting and um yeah this one I tried to keep even looser I used a lot of palette knife in this one and uh the blanket specifically is an otomi blanket it's called uh that's just the the, the area the tribe of the people who create those colorful rainbow-like um animals mm -hmm. uh, yeah so um, that one was very specifically meant to be a certain type of Latin American blanket so at some point I started researching blankets and what symbol is meant for the blankets and in uh, Mexico and other places they will use the blanket patterns the symbols to tell narratives within the story so I thought well that's another another way to add narrative into the painting so then I got really went down that rabbit hole of studying the symbolism of Latin American textiles and then that's when I decided to go to Mexico and learn how to actually weave and learn the symbols um, and then you know then it became it's just grown from there but that's what that um, that piece specifically is about that uh, blanket is Otomi people uh, blanket. And those animals are, are called alebrijes, which are animals that are, it's like your animal, your, um, we all have one. We all have our spirit animal. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Called an alebrije. No, I love how detailed the blanket is, and then everything else is more like loose and abstract. But you, you know, you you can tell the setting. Yeah. And I like that you're able to be super um, literal with the blanket without being literal, because people may not know, and then you're just enjoying the patterns, you, you know, without knowing the story. But then other people may research the story and then know more of a background. It's really exciting to be able to. Um, tell a story the way you did. Thank you. Yeah. And then this one, I kept the background really loose. You know, it's really, it's a sunset, but it's really kind of uh, very painterly. I definitely wanted people to know that these are paintings. I wanted people to know that they are definitely paintings and not photographs. So I wanted it to be really loose and painterly as much as I could. Because from a distance, you know, it could look semi-real or, or something, you yeah. know, something like that. Who knows? <laughs> People see it as one way when I think it's... So I wanted to make sure that it was a really very painterly and very thick. There are moments in that painting where, the, you know, it's probably a half inch or an inch, not an inch, but definitely like a half inch thick of layering. Wow. Thicknesses, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I love it. It's exciting. I love the sky, the pink and the sunset, and the I like this like the breathing of the yellow, the patch of yellow you have in there. This yeah, is very some, very well done. Some good sunsets. I want. I you know you always see a sunset and you think oh, I want to capture that. And I try to 
<laughs> mimic those really amazing sun sunsets that you get to see once in a while. Yeah. How long did this one take you? Well, at least three paintings, I work on them. I worked on them simultaneously, but some finish quicker than others. Uh, the first one, well, maybe the first one I did separately, and then the last two I did, I work on them at the same time. So it's hard to know. I It took probably like three or four months, three to six months maybe, mm -hmm. of working on them. I'm a pretty fast painter, but uh, a lot of them need time to wait and then time then time to go back into them and figure out what wasn't working. So sometimes the paintings will sit around for a year and then I'll go back into it and yeah. realize, oh, that's what needs to happen. But these ones I really had to push out. I had to, I was creating them for um, for something for the LA Art Show actually for yeah. So I wanted to have like several large paintings done. Yeah. So sometimes pressure is my best friend. Yeah, sometimes. same. I can say the same thing. <laughs> like you have a week and you're like, you know, but you get it done under pressure. Yeah. And then we have one more, and this is more, you know, painterly, the most out of all three. Yeah, this one's the mostly more about the environment, and here and now the person is uh, alone under their blanket, and it's called Winter is Coming, and it is very much about the paint. It is. I wanted you to know that it's a sky, but I also wanted you to know that it was paint, and I wanted it to act in a way that it could be an abstract painting as much as it could be a figurative painting as much as it could be a landscape painting. So it's sort of like me me fighting with myself in a lot of ways, trying to figure out which direction to go. And in that battle, I think sometimes really good things come out of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it is about being alone, and that's why she's there in the winter. And I know that that was right when New York City winter was coming, and I was like, oh. <laughs> winter is coming. Yeah. I can't do it. Winter's coming for me. Yeah. No, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. There's a lot of scraping off and adding on and taking away and putting back in that one. Um, yeah, and you have some like the the uh, blanket. It has that detailed thicker, and then you have like the sky where you scrape away. It's very successful. Yeah, I think it's important to have different elements like that I, or, I mean I don't know it, it, every painting is different and sometimes the painting is great thick and sometimes the painting is great thin but for me I, I, I tend to have some elements of thickness in my paintings and then some elements where I've scraped it away and you can see like the bareness underneath yeah. but I think that's just part of uh, the way that I have to like solve the issues within the painting is to scrape away and um, apply again uh, Add, yeah, like you can see where I've added uh, thinner in there too, and it's sort of poured down and taken away in places, so it looks like rain. It does look like rain and very like washed, a washed look. Yeah. And then at the bottom under of the sky, it's really thick, thick chunks of yellow and orange. And then what but size is this one? They're all 60 by 48. Oh, so this is a big one too. So they're all the same size. Yeah, they're all the same size. Okay. The base three. They kind of go to, you know, they they've lived together for a long time as a group. Yeah, you can tell. They can work individually, very very well. And so that's that. That's the blankets. I love the blankets. The blanket lady. I can't believe you got that nickname. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better than the dead bird girl, which is what I used to be. <laughs> yeah, you move on to your obsessions at the time. <laughs> dead bird thing going for a while. So I yeah. threw in a couple just because we're in, you know, online and it was suitable for like October and with the skulls that you had. But this is so tiny. They're four inches by four inches, <laughs> which is totally not to scale. And it's mostly with the the pilot knife and I did a lot of obsessive studying of the human skull like I had the skull that I got in New York and I put it in my suit and I just kept re 
repainting and re it felt like I was doing sculpture like studying the sculpture moving things around and that's on wood they're oil on wood where did you get the skull um that there I got it actually I went with um Rachel one day to like in Soho they have that that store where you can buy all those those like they're, they're not human, but they're like the fake human with the insects. The, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But I got it in New York and Soho, and like uh, <laughs> we, I bought this skull like, to study with. <laughs> so I'll, I'll send you the name of it, but I can't yeah. think of it now. But yeah, so it came out. They were quick. They were like, I have about 10 of these, and I, I line them up, and they're just exciting little four inches by four inches. And um, I was studying the use of like, just keeping it black and white, like two blacks, two whites, and you know, kind of like back to the basics of just studying um, human oh. human bones and human nature and life and death, and it re you know it helps you. It feels like you're examining, you know, and reexamining. I like the openness of the wood, so and I gridded it, which makes it exciting. And this is a more zoomed in one, and then this one is like. As you can see, it was this one was sitting on a blanket, so oh, yeah. it's yeah, it's zoom. It's like a little smaller head on a on a blanket. I add a little the purple into it. Yeah, is that one also tiny? Yeah, same size, like four inches by four inches. But yeah, these were fun, and they were like one hour, quick, quick little paintings. But they ended up being my most exciting at the time. I did this like two years ago. And now I'm studying, like the work I'm really doing right now, I um, it's more about like the feminine. It's about beauty, inner beauty, pl like plants. Like I have a lot of greenery in my work and I'm doing figure, figure painting, uh, trying to, but more in an abstract way because I think that's where I most enjoy like a looser impressionism and, you know, exp expression. Um, so... I'm having fun with that right now, and I'm trying to do a show in the next year, mostly, but it's all about females, and like the identity, like the feminine identity, and how we evolve, and just like a societal interpretation of, wow. where, of women. So it's definitely different from the skulls, but I think this was baby steps to, you know, start the process of thinking of who, you know, who am I becoming kind of thing. Yeah, and I think, you know, I remember seeing these pieces all together on the, you had them, like, lined up on a... On a wood shelf, yeah. Yeah, on the shelf. I was like, gosh, I love that shelf, and now I use shelves in the gallery a lot. I have you know, I have Serena's little skeletons on shelves. on shelves right now. I love the way it looks to put a few of them together like that. And I remember being always very struck by... Um, your bravery with your thickness of your paint and your willingness to just like go at it and do it a hundred times if you had to and get some good ones out of it. And I think, um, you know, these are exciting little, little paintings. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. And, um, I also discuss a lot of my work, the typewriters, which is like the past, which is dead and how I'm reviving it back to life. It's like a subject, like the cactus, in her work, I'm, I have a, the same subject that I always talk about, like your blankets. But these are just like a, a little part of the whole evolution of the process. But these are like the more of the original works that I did like two years ago. And I still today have been putting, like I have the skull in my studio. I still always incorporate that, like the form. It feels like it's like secretly hidden in all my work. <laughs> so and the bone like structure is fun but actually lately like you like I've been washing out and trying so hard not to put too much paint and I'm doing like the opposite of what I've been doing where it's very washed out and scraped off and it's like makes me feel uncomfortable but it's a good uncomfortable like I'm pre pushing myself to try new things yeah I mean there's no wrong answer you know yeah Just so, so this is this is it, and I'll go back through. Hold on. But basically, uh, Katie, for any for all of us that are still online, Katie is currently in San Diego. This exhibit is currently on display, 
But what's awesome about being online is you can see the virtual art show and we're able to share it with everyone. And, it, and it's also just to enjoy other people's work. Um, there's four artists here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five artists. One, two, five artists showing right now for this virtual art space. And it's just, you know, exciting. And we just like to collaborate. And, you know, because I feel like we all can share each other's work and grow together in our art careers. A lot of, a couple of us went to the New York Studio School, so we have that commonality. And I think you could kind of see the painterly style because it's in the, like, sh from this half on, it's people that may have studied at the school site. So I feel like it's the same vibe, like elements. Yeah. From the school into the work. Yeah, like, it really is. Which is fun, and it shows We're that very passion. very different. Like, none of them look like the same artist at all, but there's elements within our work. I think there, I think the common theme is this searching that goes on. Then that is what makes the paint thicker a lot of times. It's just the process of trying again and trying again and trying again, which is something that we get from the studio school. Yeah, and the process is usually the best part. Yeah. So um, I in the link below, um, I have her Katie's email. If you're all of this work is for sale, unless she sold them already, hopefully, which she probably did at the gallery. So just um, if you're interested, uh, you can email at the link below and ask to get learn more about these artists that are represented. And then what's the website? Vividspace.com. It's vividspacesd.com. So SD for San Diego. Vividspacesd.com. Awesome. Thank you guys and thank you for your time today. I hope you had fun. Thank you. And um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, we're done with the show. Um, but we'll have this video up all week so you can always come back and watch it and we'll post it on YouTube and all that stuff later. But we really appreciate everything and your time today and thank you guys for joining us. Yay. <laughs> thank you.